What's happening, you guys? This is the Proclivity Podcast. I am Coach Joel. I'll be your host. My co-host is Coach Emily, the one, the only, the extraordinaire, knows all things about nutrition and helping you to become metabolically flexible. And we also have a third co-host in the background, correct? <laughs> My little Dansby boys in the background. You might hear them. Yes. This is Dansby's first appearance on the Proclivity <laughs> Podcast. Um, and I, ha- I have a real good feeling he's going to have some great things to say. <laughs> Same. I, yes, totally agree. Hey, guys, before we get started, if you don't know what we do, we do something real, real well. We create healthier bodies and happier lives. How do we do that? We create metabolic flexibility. That's your body's ability to be able to burn fat. Everybody's out there like, how do I burn fat? I got to do this diet or that diet or this. Ba, 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 ba. No, 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 no. Pause. Take a breath. This is what we're going to talk about today in this episode. Being able to step back, take a breath. We teach in a very simplistic manner how to create amazing results that last. We actually have people quite often when they start the program, they're like, where's, where's the, the macro program? How are you not telling me to do every single thing, right? I need the accountability. No, no, no. What you need is the foundation, right? And to be able to get the foundation, you know what you got to do? Pull out the shovel, dig a little bit. That's what we do. We help you dig a little bit. Not only to be able to get a more metabolically flexible body, but we also help you to structure your words so that you create the appropriate image of yourself so that the nutrition habits last. Because if you have a poor image of yourself that you repeat every single day, because our words create our stories and our stories create our reality, then when we leave you, just like all the other programs you did before, you're going to end up going back to that same thought of, I just can't do it. And you go back to where you were before. But here, that's not what we do. And we do it through the proclivity method. If you're interested in it, let us know. You can reach out to us. Emily. Yes. <laughs> I was in Virginia, as you know, last week. And you know what I missed? The most. That's in my Your eight home. sleep pod. Oh my gosh, my eight sleep pod. <laughs> and the first night I slept on it and I woke up to it just wrapping me with warmth. <laughs> Guys, if you don't know the 8sleep, go to 8sleep.com. You can you can receive $150 off by putting in Joel in your in the checkout. Check it out, guys. It's for real. If you guys have inf- or questions, let us know. I haven't heard Dansby yet. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in the background. Oh, okay. He's just chatting. <laughs> he's blabbing. He's blabbing. Hey, Coach, today we're going to talk about our least most favorite topic, macros. I'm going to talk macros. Why, we are. why your macros do not matter. That's a pretty catchy. That's a bold statement. You know why you do that? It's called marketing, guys. It gets you <laughs> like really ramped up and you get really emotional because you're like, no, you're supposed to count your macros. We're not saying that you shouldn't. We're just getting you here so you're listening to us right now. So, And if you're hearing this, <laughs> we got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. But we're going to talk about macros, guys. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the one of the big topics that people don't talk about, which is actually our digestive habits, which is something that we drive home hard in the proclivity method, is the digestive habits habits one of the reasons why so many people don't get the results that they're looking for is because of digestive habits it's how we're eating instead of what we're eating and so with that said let's talk a little bit about macros let's talk about it what are we've we've done this before what are macros and what does it mean to count your macros yeah, ma- macros are the three, the protein, the carbohydrates, and fat. Those are the macronutrients that we need. That's how food is classified. Um, you know, usually the carbs and the fat are there for our fuel. The protein's there for muscle and tissue building and recovery. 
Um, and to count your macros is to log or calculate how many of those percentage-wise or gram-wise is in your daily total. So if you say you have a 2,000 calorie day diet um, or day, <clears throat> and then you're calculating the percentage or the exact grams of protein, uh, fats, and carbs that that divides into. And lots of people do this for, for um, you know, many reasons as mm -hmm. far as um, controlling the amount of calories, controlling hunger, controlling satiety, uh, in accordance to your activity level, you know, these percentages or grams might be higher or lower. I don't know if you're going to know the answer to this. This just came into my head. I'm really Shoot. testing you here. Yeah. When did <laughs> Shoot it to me. When did macro counting come up? Like this, this can't be like, it's not like we're our, in the archaic days, right? We mm -hmm. were like, oh, um, how much is that rhinoceros? How many grams of protein do you think that rhinoceros is? Like when did yeah. macros come up? Um, I don't know this for sure, but if I had to guess, it either came around when, um, you know, more in a doctor visit setting as far as if you had things like epilepsy, but actually the first thing that came to mind was um, bodybuilding. So like back mm, in the day when people sure. first started bodybuilding, that's where I would, I would guess. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But it was more specific to like that was their job. They did bodybuilding to win competitions for specific physique, not health. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, I think it got glorified when we found out that we can lose weight doing it um, or even build muscle doing it. Uh, and yeah, I'm not exactly sure where it started, but I think that's that's where it happened. Dang. I would say if I were to roll my dice, you just nailed that. I mean, if anybody's listening and you know for sure, let us know. Yet, I, I would agree too yeah. that it started off in the bodybuilding you know, days and it was more about like, hey, what's your protein? Right? How much protein are you getting, bro? Um, and then right. being able to recognize that we start getting to this, um, macro counting. And there's a lot of businesses out there that literally have like macros in their, in their business name. And, and, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a catch all and guys recognize that it, everything that's out there, including proclivity, we're, we're trying to sell you something. Now we're trying to sell you something because we truly believe in our product, just like everyone else. And we're here to be able to help you yet be cautious right? Again, the reason why that we said why your macros don't matter is because we want to catch you and be able to bring you here to explain what the importance of macros, where they belong and where they might not belong. And so being able to, to recognize, hey, where did this whole macro thing come from is, is really important. Now, going to macros, again, people track this. How do they track their macros? Like, how do you know how many macros to have and what's in the macros in a package mm -hmm. and do they have to weigh it like yep yeah so it started off with like people i think uh, made their own like spreadsheets whether it be handwritten <laughs> or online on the computer um and yeah you're looking at the the label as far as how many calories are in it how many like we just said fats carbs and proteins are in it in the food that you're eating relative to the portion size. Um, before we had scales, maybe people weren't using those, but for the most part now we're using scales and weighing our food. So it's all based on weight rather than say like a cup or um, you know a teaspoon, it's more weight based on grams or ounces. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that, that's how people would do it. But now you can also use an app like MyFitnessPal, um, Chronometer, and there's a few other ones out there. I think maybe my macros is another one. Um, and you just enter in the food and how much you're you're eating of it, and then it calculates your daily total for you. And and there's there's benefit to counting your macros, right? To being able to understand because there's a lot of people who go like, oh oh yeah yeah no I I totally get enough protein throughout the day, and then you actually count your macros and you realize like oh. I'm only getting a short portion. So there's there's good reasons to count your yeah. macros, right? Yeah, it's a great learning experience. If you've never counted your macros and you know, you know someone tells you, oh, you should probably eat, be eating more protein or eating less carbs or more carbs or this and that. You know, well, it's like, how are you supposed to know unless you, you do some math <laughs> in your head of like, oh, what does my typical day look like? Totally. And so I highly recommend doing it for a day or two or even a couple of weeks, you know, whatever works for you to start learning like, oh, what is a typical meal? What is, how much protein is here? How much fat? How many carbs are here? And how many calories overall am I eating? And that's, that's usually where most co coaches start is they just have you track what you already do to see what your baseline is. So you can be your own coach and do it yourself too. Totally. 
Totally. And, and being able to have a good coach, because what we do in the, the proclivity method is we have a diary, right? In, in terms of, hey, what did you eat today? And with a trained eye and a trained coach, we can look at that and go, ooh, yeah, not enough protein. We actually don't need the scale. We don't need to put in my fitness pal. We can go because we're trained and we're professionals. We go, ooh, yeah, that's way too many carbohydrates, not enough fat, and barely enough protein. Totally. And, yep. But using tools like my fitness pal, if you don't have a coach, is very helpful, right? Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, and it's helpful for most people, but where it becomes a problem is where we depend on it mm-hmm. and we rely on it and we get so meticulous that it, you know, increases our stress or anxiety. Um, or if you're that analytical, maybe OCD type person, it becomes a problem. Um, and it, it doesn't allow as much flexibility if you let that happen to yourself. So it's being mm-hmm. aware of how it can control you potentially. Right. Um, but you can also just use it as a tool, which is what we like to use it as here. And that, that brings me to the point. Where is macro counting bad for us? Because we've done some clarity calls with people who have had or created eating disorders due to the fact that they got so obsessive about weighing every ounce and if it wasn't perfect and they were one gram off they felt like they noticed that their waist was bigger and their energy was off and that's that ocd you were talking about right so people can people can actually count their macros beyond their macros and still not get the results right Right. Yeah. So if you're someone who's, you know, as extreme as having an eating disorder, because, because again, you're so meticulous and trying to be perfect. Um, that's obviously a place where we definitely don't want to be counting our macros. Um, if, if you find yourself not wanting to go eat out at restaurants or enjoy a meal with a friend because you can't weigh it precisely, that's obviously another sign that this is not working well for you. It's causing you any kind of stress. Um, because we know that when our stress is increased, that we are not going to be able to get in that parasympathetic state where our body can relax and can actually lose the weight that we want to be losing, which is what most people's goals are when they're counting macros. I would say the majority is to lose weight. There are some people who want to gain muscle mass or maintain, but most people are trying to get a better body composition. That's usually losing some fat um, and potentially getting some more muscle too, right? Um, So when we start adding on stress, that's just mm-hmm. going to cancel everything out, if not make things worse. And I, I know so many people, I've had clients in the past um, who are so meticulous with it that it causes more stress than it helps. And so that's why we typically recommend try for a few days or a few weeks just to become aware. Add it in every once in a while if you start coming up with some new meals and you just want to see how much is in each meal. Um, but otherwise, you typically don't have to count your macros unless you're doing those specific goals such as a bodybuilding competition um, or you're really just you know losing sight of whatever you're doing and we want to just see how things are going but yeah that's what i'd recommend if you if you have any stress around tracking because it is a lot of work you do have to weigh your food you have to enter it in take the time each day to enter it in and it can cause like stress in your head like oh, how much should i have i don't know what was that yes. what should i enter it in at as because if you don't have the exact brand or the exact thing Mm -hmm. it's just all these other added um steps that cause a lot of people a lot of stress so something to be aware of for sure yeah without without a doubt and you know one of the things that you touched in on there is that that parasympathetic and sympathetic state guys if you don't know what the parasympathetic and sympathetic state is is you're in when in a parasympathetic state it's known as your rest and digest so this is your body at rest when you're sleeping when you're nice and relaxed, right? Usually this is where people are like, oh man, I can't wait, can't wait to get home and relax. That's due to the fact that you've been in a sympathetic state. And the sympathetic state is that fight or flight. It's literally designed in our body to run away or fight external threats. Yet we are the only ones, only species that can establish or create the sympathetic response with our thoughts. Oh man, I really got to get that project done. Oh, does, does that girl actually like me? Yeah, uh, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm, I can't stop thinking about my food. Sympathetic state, sympathetic state, sympathetic state. And we jack ourselves up into the sympathetic state. And we re- release all of these hormones that are meant to like literally make us like Superman to fight off that cyber, saber-toothed tiger. 
but yet we're dumping these hormones into our body. And this is one of the reasons of what Emily was talking about, where it's like you could be dead on with your macros, but you're dumping all these hormones in that are keeping you from being able to lose that weight. And one of the things we talk about in the proclivity method is notice and name. Notice and name. Eat something. How does it feel? That takes you actually listening to your body, not inputting it into a calculator. Because the calculator doesn't know what your body feels. The calculator is just going to give you a number. Yet you can go, hmm, I ate that and my stomach hurts. Or I ate that and I feel really energetic. This is one of the things that, that, that we really hammer home and focus on and it's really hard for people at times when they first start because they want to give me the numbers, right? And so what we're talking about here, guys, is what we call digestive habits. We talk about nutritional habits, right? What to eat, what macros, but we actually bring in digestive habits. How does your body digest that food? Not just what is the food that you're putting in your body. So, Coach Emily, what are digestive habits? Yeah, digestive habits are habits around how we eat, um, whether that be literally like how we chew our food, how you know how we are eating, whether it be we're sitting, we're standing, we're moving. Um, how our digestion is working, whether or not we're drinking liquids with our meals, all those things matter. Um, they, they increase or decrease our satiety levels, our hunger levels, um, our absorption of what we're actually eating. So we could be eating the perfect diet, but if we're not absorbing or digesting it, then it doesn't matter, right? Um, because we'll still feel have that low energy and we'll just, we're moving everything through our system without absorbing it and using it. And so these come into play with all of my clients. Um, it is the first thing that we look at if you're having any issues with digestion, obviously, but also with energy um, and weight loss. And so, yeah, we take a look at everything around how you eat your food, what it looks like for you. And why is this so important? Like, I mean, we created a program that really revolves around these digestive habits why is it so important? What is it solving? Hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, bec it's teaching you yourself to become more aware because when we're counting macros, we're relying on something else and we're less aware because it's something separate from ourselves, right? It's counting it for us. And some, and people like that in the beginning, They're like, Oh, it's less work for me. It's doing the, you know, the math for me. And that I just have to follow that. Mm. We can't rely on that the rest of our lives. We're not going to always have that little calculator. <laughs> we're not going to always want to be weighing our food, right? That's just right. silly. And so when we start becoming more aware, we're building that tool within ourselves. And instead of relying on the macros or the digestive supplements or the medication mm -hmm. or this, that, and the other to lose weight or to fix this symptom, whatever it is, we're using ourselves to be like, hmm, yeah, let's pause here. Let's think about this. Why is this happening? What can I adjust um, to make me digest better, absorb better, feel better, be less stressed and yeah, feel more energized. Right. Yeah, totally. Well, and what you're talking about is changing the route, right? Guys, you could, you could be counting your macros, but yet you're still living in a sympathetic state all day long. Your language is horrible about yourself. You're going a million miles an hour. You're getting four hours of sleep or five hours of sleep. I, I mean, we have clients who, when they first start with us, they're, they're, they literally have this pride about them that they're running out the door having their shake and their avocado toast as they're sprinting out the door and being like, yeah, you know, you just got to you gotta do what you got to do to be able to get your meals in, get your macros in. And we're sitting there like, no, no, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, right? Yeah, you're getting some macros in, right? That's what eating is. Everything has some macros, but being able to dive into that foundation and start changing those habits of like, yes, you guys, you control your schedule. Newsflash, you control your life. Newsflash, <laughs> okay? Yes, you have time to take a lunch. We have worked with the highest 
level of business professionals, from CEOs to vice presidents, and they will initially say, yeah, don't have time. What? You are the boss. <laughs> You're saying you don't have time? No, you have the time. It's the imposter inside us that is saying, you can't do that. You can't take care of yourself. You got to take care of everybody else. And what is everybody going to think about you if you sit down and you take your shoes off and you take a second to breathe before you eat? You know what they're going to think? Hmm, maybe I can do that too. Now if you get an entire team that cares for themselves, who sit down, who slow down, who eat, now you create progress. Now we're going from just like, oh, digestive habits to like, oh, no, your business is making more money. Yeah, we do that too. We help people yep. live happier lives and make more money. We're, we're the, we, we can do it all here at Proclivity, you guys. <laughs> we can do it. So for, for a lot of people, the reason that they start macro counting is because they're really looking to lose weight. Mm -hmm. We've touched on it a little bit here. Can you have the appropriate macros and not lose weight? And on the flip side, can you have macros that aren't perfect, but have really good digestive habits and lose weight? Yeah. Yeah. So you can, again, I've had these clients time and time again. That's why they get to me is because like, oh, I've tried the macro in, macro route and it's not working for me. What's going on? And like I said before, it's usually because we're being too precise and we're too uptight. We're in that. Uh, sympathetic state while we're eating and that when your body's chronically in that state especially while you're eating it's not going to absorb those nutrients you're not going to feel those hunger cues those hormone levels aren't going to balance out all of the things are going to work against you if you're not <sighs> breathing mm -hmm. chewing your body's not producing the right digestive enzymes all of those things matter and so if you're not doing all those yeah just counting your macros isn't going to matter so the quality of the food the digestive habits are in my opinion king over macros because i have had clients too where they're not counting macros or they have macros that i could see are way too low or way too high um, and yet they still are finding improvements because they're allowing their body to de-stress relax and like you just said with like your language even and having a better mindset about it all it just lets your body literally like take a load off of itself and start doing the things that it's meant to do much more easier wow so what we're <laughs> i love this what we're saying here is, guys, you could eat the right food. And if you are in that sympathetic state, your body doesn't take in the nutrients. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong here, Coach Emily. Your body's not taking in the nutrients the way it should. It's basically like in and out, right? Your hormones are wacky. So the hormone to be able to say like, oh, you're full, and the hormone to say, oh, you're hungry, start getting wacky. So what ends up happening is that you actually don't have the nutrients. Your hormones are imbalanced. So your body's actually telling you to eat more when... Usually, yep. Right? It's telling you to eat more even though you ate the appropriate amount of macros. So it's a cycle of not being able to absorb it. So then your body's actually calling to it again saying like, hey, we didn't get the the nutrients we need. So we're going to tell you that you're hungry again because we need those nutrients. Because last time when we sat down, you were freaking out, sprinting out the door with your avocado toast and your, your perfect <laughs> mix of macros with your protein and smoothie shake. And we didn't get what we needed. So we're going to tell you that you're hungry again. And then you are fighting this constant craving of like, should I? And then you have the language in your head. I shouldn't be eating yet right? Oh my gosh. If I eat more, I'm going to be so fat. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm eating that. This is where the language comes in guys. Does that, is that true in terms of what I just said? Yes. Very true. Yeah. It's like that feeling if you've ever just had a meal and even immediately after even half hour, hour after like, man, I'm like physically feel full, but I'm still hungry. Like, I feel like I need to eat more. Like, what is that? And that's like the typical symptom and yeah. Yep. And then it's that vicious cycle. Like you just said with the language too. All right, let's get spe specific. P specific. 
<laughs> I always struggle with that word. I don't know what it is I with do, that I word. I do too. Anybody else <laughs> struggle too. with that? Is anybody else out there? Just nod your head. If you're listening to us on the podcast, just nod your head back. <laughs> yeah, totally. I get what you're saying. Or there's going to be other people who are like, what? You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> hey, you know what? We're really good at helping people get metabolically flexible. <laughs> Saying sure. specific, maybe not so much. <laughs> Let's talk about the symptoms, right? If people are out there and they're unsure, right? I'm, I've counted macros mm -hmm. or I've done this diet, right? Is, the, is it actually my digestive habit? What are some symptoms? Because we see this with our clients quite often. We know the symptoms. We're hearing it. And we're like, oh, yeah, we know what's going on, your digestive habits. What are the symptoms of, of poor digestive habits? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so the obvious ones are the actual digestive symptoms, whether or not you're bloating, acid reflux heartburn, um, poor bowel movements are like fluctuating where they're just yeah either super loose or you're constipated. Um, constipation is, tends to be more common when you are more stressed um, because everything's uptight and you, so you have low motility because of that. Um, but the ones you might not think about um, first off would be adrenal fatigue type symptoms which means at night you are more keyed up and in the morning you're an extremely slow starter. So your energy levels are wacky. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the most common. You maybe are lethargic in your workouts. <clears throat> you're not losing weight like you think you should be because of the macros or you're working out this, that, and the other. Um, your body composition isn't changing. Um, you're having other random symptoms like your skin's not looking, you know, you have like itchy skin or bumps on your skin or acne <clears throat> anything like that as far as your skin goes. Um, and I, I'm probably missing more, but literally it could be almost any symptom because mm -hmm. when our body, when we have a symptom, that's our body showing a sign of stress and inflammation. And if we're not digesting well, um, it's going to lead to that. <clears throat> so, so it could be almost literally anything, but those are most common is not losing the weight. Um, and then you have energy issues. You're super tired when you feel like you should have energy, um, like in the morning or you have that uh, afternoon slump. Um, and then you're ke maybe keyed up at night or you have trouble sleeping. Those are the most common ones. Mm. That rings a deep, deep bell for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, working uh, and and running a gym. If anyone's ever ran a gym or has, has just been in a general manager position or leadership position, the pressure of, you know, producing, creating results, and so on and so forth, that, that pressure with me, I, I saw a, a video, I was going through some of my pictures and photos and I went way back. I saw myself. Right, shirt off, doing a, uh, a squat clean thruster, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, look at you, pudgy pudge!" Right, <laughs> and I, it's not that I I looked terrible. I just recognized, like, whoa, I saw inflammation. I didn't see mm -hmm. weight gain. I saw this inflammation, and if I go back in time, my day would usually start like this: wake up at five feel exhausted like oh my gosh i could use like x amount more sleep just struggling mm -hmm. to get up immediately hitting coffee like i need something mm -hmm. to get my body rolling then try to eat something and I, at least i had that i would i would nine times out of ten have a, a, a really good breakfast yet then i would go straight into like training like I'm coaching and, and I'm, I'm doing personal training. It's like boom, 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 boom. So I, I don't, I'm not giving my body any time to digest because I'm like right out of the gates, shooting out of the gates at, at 7 o'clock or 7.30 is when my first client would be. And then it would be nonstop throughout the rest of the day. And I would be thinking about my next snack. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till 10.30, can't wait till 10.30, can't wait till 10.30, I can't wait till 10.30 because my hormones were all off. I wasn't absorbing that nutrients. And so mm -hmm. th then I would go throughout my day and I would go to bed until super late. I'd be averaging anywhere from like five and a half to six hours of sleep a night. Ooh, right. And started understanding like, whoa, this is where my inflammation was. This is where my stress was. This is where my imbalance, right. I would hit two or three coffees in the afternoon to be able to like 
keep me up for the, the, the afternoon. And when, when I moved on from that and I got myself into these really solid digestive habits, bringing myself into a parasympathetic state throughout the day, taking 45-minute walks, being able to break away from work, right? I started losing a lot of weight. And what I mean by weight, a lot of inflammation. And my body felt better. And I feel so much more control of my hunger cues and so on and so forth to the point that I eat one to two meals a day. And I feel great about it. And I, I'm not counting down the time. I'm just listening to my body. And that, you guys, in, in terms of a, a testimonial from a coach who have been in it for 10 years, I know that there are some of you guys out there that are shaking your head. And I counted macros. I did. I did the zone diet, right? Paleo. But it really came down to, whoa, I'm in this constant fight or flight throughout the day. I'm not mm -hmm. absorbing my food. I wasn't paying attention for five years having diarrhea because I had gluten intolerance. I was counting my macros. Yet I wasn't stopping, noticing, and naming and going, Mm, wow, having diarrhea <laughs> daily is not healthy, right? Mm -mm. And I'm sure there's some of you guys out there right now that are like, oh, yeah, I guess constant headaches are not something that everybody has, huh? Uh, bloating every single day is not something that everybody has. Like, if you're having these symptoms, guys, that is your body literally screaming at you, you're doing something wrong. Stop it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's sad too because I know a lot of people who do live like that and it's not a way to live <laughs> coming from experience. Yeah, what's your experience? Yeah, so I mean the whole reason why I got into this, I had terrible – I had so many different symptoms. <laughs> um, I actually was fainting in the morning. I, this is before I ate meat at all. Um, but I would have fainting spells. Um, I had terrible digestive issues. I was bloated all the time no matter what I ate. Um, I, but looking back, I held in all my emotions and I was always in that, uh, sympathetic state. So yeah, exactly that. But then I, I had, um, I had kidney stones. I had seizures. <laughs> I had, um, a permanent rash on my face. that was super annoying, super dry and itchy skin. I didn't have my period. <laughs> uh, the list goes on. I had chronic, um, chronic pain in my legs to where I couldn't work out anymore. I had to have surgery on them. So yeah, the list goes on and on, but it all, <clears throat> the root cause came back to my digestion. I was absorbing these nutrients in combination with finding the right quality foods that worked for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, yeah, figuring out how to get myself relaxed and breathe. <laughs> Huge, simple, yet so effective. <laughs> simple and easy are not the same, you guys. If you're listening, yep. simple and easy are not the same. We think that it needs to be complex. We have mm -hmm. to have this program and we have to, you know, we have to dose on my carbohydrates at a certain time and at a certain place. And it has to be simple and easy or not the Ooh. same. I tried everything. I tried eliminating all the different types of foods. I thought for sure it was a food intolerance, which, yes, again, going back to the quality issue, that's part of it. Sure. But the biggest mover was being able to realize how can I relax and like, I didn't even realize I was so tense throughout the day. I was shallow breathing. I was barely chewing my food because I was eating on the run. Um, yeah, it's huge. Huge. Does that sound like you guys? Are you listening and be like, yeah, I'm always on the run. I'm always stressed out. Let me ask you right now. Shoulders tight? Is your neck tight? Do you, do you jaw? Get jaw? How about headaches? Do you get that? Listen, if you're breathing in your chest all day long, you're using those muscles that are high. If we're breathing through our mouth, <laughs> we're up in our shoulders. And then we wonder like, oh man, why is my neck? You even might start getting rounded shoulders because you're breathing up in your chest. When you start breathing, ah yeah, Emily raised her hand. If You, you guys can't see it, but she raised Been her hand. There. When you start breathing into your diaphragm, right, into your belly, you start using the muscles down in your low back, around your rib cage, and you start opening yourself up and you start expanding. 
instead of shallow and collapsed. And this, your breath, will put you into a sympathetic or parasympathetic response. This is why we focus on the words, you guys, because there's certain words you use that bring you tension. Your breath goes way up into your chest. <gasps> and then there's certain words that we can change when it comes to your nutrition, yourself, where it all of a sudden <sighs> relaxes. If you have ever been talking to somebody or even yourself and you've been talking, you can see they're all tight, tense and tight, right? And then something clicks, you say something or they finally something settles in and they do this. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Boom. That's the breath. You just dropped into parasympathetic. And that's that big open. And before that, there was no diaphragm use. It was... <laughs> And this is what we're talking about. This is just some of the digestive habits is how do we breathe? How do we move? What do we think? These are the digestive habits that can get you to the body. Emily and I are literally examples in the <laughs> fitness field, totally focused on our foods. You know the difference between what's right and wrong, but there's a difference between why and how. Why should we be eating this and how we should be eating this? And when we put those together and we realize that we're in control and we realize we can listen to our body and we let go of the pressure, then all of a sudden, <sighs> and your body goes, cool, now we can take those nutrients. Cool, now we can fall asleep and get into the right mm -hmm. REM and deep sleep. Cool, now we can have better conversations with people because we're not so tunnel visioned. Ah, <sighs> everything relaxes, right? Totally. <laughs> Oh, I don't have the cravings anymore. That was a big one for me. I would always be craving sweets. And yeah, mm -hmm. once your body starts absorbing and filling that micronutrient cup, as I like to say, mm -hmm. it, it just, yeah, it disappears. And your palate changes too, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. When you start adding in those quality whole foods, yes, it takes time and that's not easy at first, but yeah, your palate changes and you start craving the more whole foods, um, the more nutrient dense foods. I was having some squash the other day. I literally was saying to myself, this is candy. Yeah, yeah. That's how I am with bell peppers. I'm like, this is like apples. Yes. <laughs> it's a treat. Right? And you guys may be thinking right now, you're like, oh, you guys are coaches and that's it. No, trust us. We didn't think that apples and squash were the greatest thing. You know, yeah. bell peppers were the greatest thing. <laughs> if you knew me growing up, you, yeah, you would be laughing, dying, because I was the pickiest eater. <laughs> right? Yet... When your body starts going like, oh, those nutrients makes us feel so good. Your body's so freaking mm -hmm. intuitive, you guys. It goes, oh, yeah. oh, we're going to change your taste buds because that makes us feel real good. And then all of a sudden when you used, you used to say, and here comes the language, oh, I can never eat vegetables. It's just something I hate. Abracadabra, with your words you create, yep, you can never eat vegetables, so you never will. Or... Take out never. I can eat vegetables when I decide. Oh, now all of a sudden you're in control. That changes it. Now we're starting to get digestive with the language. Things are getting crazy up in here. <laughs> crazy up in here. So we've worked with a lot of different people. Coach Emily, what's the hardest thing for people when it comes to changing digestive habits? Yes. Yeah. And like I said before, sim yeah, or like you said before, simple and easy are not the same thing. Um, what the feedback I receive and for myself is remembering or creating the habit to actually sit down and breathe when you eat. Literally, it's just a habit. But we've been eating whole lives a certain way, whether it be on the run or in the car or whatever, <clears throat> or even just like in front of the TV or on our phones. Um, but remembering to breathe, expand your, like you said, diaphragm, even your belly, lower those shoulders, relax your jaw, chew, all those things, but especially the breathing and taking the time to just be present while you're eating. Those are the hardest ones, but it's literally just a matter of habits um, and starting slow with that. So the first thing I have people do is start with three big, deep breaths before you start your meal. Just start there. Super simple. Um, and then increase on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we always, 
we tend to tell people, take the low hurdle first. Take the low hurdle. You don't have to do this massive giant step. Mm-hmm. Now, eventually what you want to do is be able to schedule out time to be able to have 30 minutes, 45 minutes on a rep, uninterrupted time to eat. And that's just creating an appointment for yourself, right? Just being able to go, yeah, 12 to 12.45, I'm unavailable. You can't get a hold of me. I'm sitting down, standing up to myself and being able to take care of myself. And that's a big step is start off low, then start protecting your time, start standing up to yourself. And before you know it, you're going to lose that 15 pounds. You're going to feel in control. You're going to have a happier life because you have time to relax and get in that parasympathetic state. And guess what, guys, for all you hard chargers out there, when you get out of tunnel vision, right, it's, it's called tunnel vision for a reason. You can't see anything peripheral, right? Can't see side to side. When you get into a parasympathetic state and you're able to breathe, those blinders start coming off. So then what can you do? Oh, there's more options here. You know, when it comes to that work project, I can actually move it over here. Actually, when it comes to this thing that I've been obsessing about, it's actually not going to make us any money at all. Let's get rid of it. Yet when we're in a constant sympathetic state, all we can see is what's in front of us. And now you're in this constant thought process of just plow through instead of go, wait a second, I don't have to plow through. I can literally just one step to the side and walk right around it. How much easier is that instead of this mentality that just got to grind through it, just pound through it. Some of the greatest influencers and greatest minds in, in the world took walks all the time walking around john f kennedy during the missile crisis cuban missile crisis we're talking about nuclear bombs smoking us you know what he was doing he was walking around the rose garden he was drawing he was writing and guess what he did he figured it out all right the world didn't blow up de-escalated because when you're making a decision you need to be in a calm space to be able to make decisions for your nutrition and for yourself. Your nutrition and for yourself. Hmm? Yep. So let's talk about the de- digestive habits. Let's give, as mm-hmm. we as we do, we're going to close this thing out. What are the top three digestive habits you would tell somebody to start with today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, number one. Uh, As you mentioned before, notice and name. So for me, that's just increase your awareness of what am I eating? You know, what's in front of me on my plate? How is it making me feel? Am I hungry before or am, you know, am I, am I satisfied after? Did Mm -hmm. I eat enough? So asking yourself these questions, noticing things. So that's just increased awareness. Number one, number two, like we mentioned breath. So can you get your body to relax? Diaphragmatic breathe a little bit. If you don't know what that is, just put your hands on your rib cage. <sighs> breathe into that rib cage um, a little bit more rather than just your chest or just your belly. So it's more in the center there. Um, <clears throat> so breath, like I said, start with three simple breaths and then increase from there. Um, number three, I would say chew more because I think that's something that's super tangible and easy for people to grasp onto. Um, the more we chew, the more we salivate and taste our food while we're chewing and break it down, the more digestive enzymes our body is going to produce and signal to the rest of our body, oh, food is on its way, let's prepare. Mm. And again, that's going to increase that absorption, which is going to increase our energy and everything else that our body needs to do. So those, those would be my top three. There are many more, um, but those are great ones to start with. S- simple and easier, not the same thing, guys. Try those out. Let us know. You can always reach out to us. You can go to our website, www.proclivity.co. You can contact contact us there at team at proclivity.co. You can contact me at joel at proclivity.co or emily at emily at proclivity.co. We are here to answer your questions. We love answering questions because we have been in that position before and we want mm-hmm. to get you out of your hell and into your heaven. We want everybody to live a life that is so 
joyous and full of life and energetic and ready to play with your kids and ready to be able to start a business and ready to be able to fit into that 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 dress or that suit that you've been wanting we know it because we've done it and we're here to be able to help you at any point reach out to us you can also reach out to us on our instagram proclivity.co or on the instagram page you can reach out to, to emily or myself we're there to be able to help out at any point coach emily anything else that's it just just you know, ask yourself the question, if you're one of those hard chargers, people who, you know, maybe you don't even notice your stress, but you are having some of these issues, start to take notice and understand that when our body is in that chronic flight or flight state, our body's not going to want to lose that weight. It's going to mm. be inflamed. It's going to hold on to any and all fat that it can possibly. And that's why you're not going to lose the weight. So there's, there's a lot more to it, but yeah, ask yourself those questions. If you have any more yet, yeah, please do reach out. We love answering them. Such a good point. Such a good point. That that's a sympathetic state or fire or flight state. It holds on to that fact because it's like, oh man, we got to make sure you stay alive because there's you're at a threat. Right. You're threatened all the time, right? Yep. Wow. What a great way to end that. Good job, Coach Emily, with the knowledge bombs per usual. All right, you guys. Well, as usual, like I said, if you want to reach out, reach out. We're here to help. We really appreciate Dansby for being on the. <laughs> the podcast for his very first appearance if you heard him in the background that's that's d-man d-man he's the best the best the best we're a little biased emily's definitely biased <laughs> she gave birth to him <laughs> you guys we appreciate you tuning in make sure to subscribe and like if you haven't done so already and if you can share with other people we're trying to get our message out we'd love for you to be able to share this thank you so much until next time, bye. See ya.